Hello everybody, this is Havoc and welcome back to our second video in our tutorial for Total War Rome Remastered. In the first episode, we took a look at all the settings that it would take to get familiar with the campaign and really customize it to make it your own. In today's episode, we are going to go over the user interface that you see standing before you, namely on the borders. What I mean by borders is on the outskirts, over here on your left, all the way over to the right, we're going to look down at the bottom things, and we'll end on the faction summary. Now, I don't want to go too terribly in-depth with this. I want you to get familiar with the buttons that you see here before we get into the super details of your settlements, of your agents, of all of that kind of stuff. So we're, we're slowly getting into the swing of things. Now, what we're going to start with is we are going to start with your notifications. The biggest difference... Um, right off the bat between Total War Rome Remastered and Rome Total War in the original is one of these suckers over here. Now, if you have the end turn setting turned on for Total War Rome Remastered, like we went over in the last episode, if you were to hit the end turn button and you still had something that had not been read, you would get a notification down here saying, hey, FYI, you've got something over here to look at. So we're going to take a look at what these are, and then we will progress from there. Your first is going to be alerts. Now, this highlights the most important information about running your empire. We go down here. Uh, that's navigation. We won't worry about it. Now, obviously, we don't have anything right now because this is the very beginning of your campaign. But we can get an idea on what your alerts are by hitting your filters. Now, I highly recommend being in the very beginnings of your campaign to keep all of these turned on. As you can see, there is a lot of them. A lot. And when I say a lot, I mean, goodness gracious, we have all sorts of things to get alerts on. Now, this may seem a bit overwhelming, but honestly, if this wasn't even here, you wouldn't even be aware. Now, what you can do, for instance, is as you continue playing your campaign, you can go in here and you can modify what you want and what you don't want. For instance, if, uh, say, I don't, uh, I know exactly what it looks like when an enemy or when an agent is successful. It's obvious the dude's going to die. The character that he's going after will die. So if I wanted to do that, then I would take the success alert off. I know I see it. It's going to work. Agent sabotage is the same way or even spying is the same way. So if all of my successes, I don't need to see it then I don't need to put it there. Now, it would be more concerning for me personally if the agent failed or if the agent was killed or detected or executed. So that's where I would come in here and I would look and be like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, let's uh, let's turn out uh, the rival agent buyout for your merchant was a success. I don't need to know that because I will see that happen kind of a deal. Uh, so that's your alerts. We'll get into that once the end turn happens. But I want you to be aware of what we're going on here. Your news is about all of your factions, uh, all the factions around you, all the things that you can see. For instance, uh, if a character gains or loses a trait, family events, diplomacy, and then kind of your statistics about your faction. Who is the largest one? Who is the richest? Who is the strongest? Just uh, all of those kinds of outside of your empire alerts. And then the last one is reports. This deals directly with recruitment and construction, as well as giving you a summary of your end of turn report. Now, what will happen here is things like uh, you'll see a construction in Iridium has been constructed. But what it will also do is it'll say, hey, by the way, you constructed, say, a practice field, but you don't have anything geared up behind it. So in that case, you'd be like, oh, OK, cool. Well, I got the money. Let me let me bring something else in. Or if you do have some stage, you can be like, oh, OK, cool. Aretium is uh, building a practice range that's it's been built, but I can already see and we'll see that here in a little bit that it's already got another building schedule, which is super, super handy to look at. Now, there will be other indicators uh, as we'll get to, I believe, probably in the next episode where what am I trying to think of where we will be able to to tell what is going on at a glance, what is happening within each city. But this just gives you a good rundown. Uh, and we'll, we'll get into this, like I said, a little bit later. But one thing, if you'll notice across all three of these, 
are these two buttons at the bottom. Now you can end the turn while still having notifications. Still very easy to do, it's still very plausible, but say you get to that next turn and you forgot to you know, click off of that. You just go over here, you hit all, mark all messages as red, similar to Microsoft Inbox. I mean, it's pretty similar. And then you can delete all your messages. I, for one, don't like a whole lot of messages queued up. So if they get backlogged or if I don't think about it for a while and I go in here and I'm like, oh crap, there's a, there's a lot of stuff here. I can just delete it all. Super handy to do across all three of those. Your last one, I believe is limited only to the Romans since they're the only ones that have a Senate. Um, this is where your Senate missions come into play. It lays it all out for you. You need to take the settlement of Segesta or Segesta, however you want to say it. You got 10 turns. You'll be greatly rewarded and you can see exactly where that is. Now, all Senate missions don't have to be completed, but it is highly recommended that you do. Uh, it'll kind of brown nose you to the Senate itself, which is an incentive to give you a office or to get rewards. Uh, you'll be asked to do things like taking settlements or blockading ports. You'll even sometimes be asked to interact with other factions. So again, you don't have to do them. And for instance, I've had the Senate, while I'm at war with the Gauls, want to uh, get a peace treaty with them. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm winning this. So I'm not going to do it. Now, they'll be upset, but uh, you'll be okay, believe me. Uh, so that is kind of your left-hand notifications tab over here. Again, super, super helpful. Uh, I use it all the time, all the time. And it just it makes things run a lot smoother. Uh, your advisors up here, if you were to have it turned on, that would be in working operation. This is your wiki, as we discussed before. I do believe we have discussed it. Maybe we haven't. Uh, this wiki will give you all sorts of information about near every single type of related topic in the game. For instance, squalor. The greater settlement's population, the higher it's squalor. Uh, if you want to know about settlement sizes, what uh, it requires how many people each time a government building is constructed, more advanced things, just all sorts of deals, even down into the barbarian invasion kind of deals and your uh, your battle tactics even. There's so many, so many things that go on in this wiki and it's super, super helpful. Highly recommend that if you ever need help, you don't have a problem with hitting that wiki button. You have your, your help on current panel and then of course your menu, which you can always use to hit uh, with escape. So that's your top left corner. Pretty, pretty simple, pretty uh, easy to comprehend. We're going over to the top right, and this is where things start to get uh, a little bit listy in, in a way. For one, we're going to start out with our financial overview. Now, you can see here that we have a starting uh, amount of 5,000 gold or 5,000 denarii, however you want to look at it. And in this financial overview, you see your current balance, your income, expenses, your net turn income, which can be negative. And then if we were to just hit that end turn button right now, our balance would go from 5,000 down to 4,748. So this gives you a really good financial overview, go figure, of what's going on within your empire. Now, if you saw that and you were like, holy crap, what am I dropping 3,400 bucks on right off the bat? Or how in the world am I making 3,100 denarii right off the bat? You'll see down at the bottom the hold alt to expand tooltip. If we hold down Alt, this gives you a greater financial overview breakdown. So as you can see, our income is made out of taxes, trade, farming and mining, and other income. And then our expenditure is all from salaries and upkeep at the moment. So as you see, our salaries and upkeep are a massive amount of drainage. In about every single Total War game, your biggest drain will always be your army. So keep that in mind. Uh, you're not just going to be able to freely build all the time and have giant 10,000 armies. It's just not going to be feasible unless you have a really, really strong economy to back it up. So one of the things we are going to deal with once we get into the campaign are finding ways that we can bring that balance up. So if you'll also notice down here, we're going to let go of the alt button goes down to the simplified. And if you see that red arrow pointing down, it means that your net turn income is in the negative. 
if you see it green and pointing up obviously it means that you are going to be in the positive and like i said we'll get into ways to make money it's very easy it's very simple once you understand it but uh we'll get into that in just a little bit uh next up we have our turn excuse me our turn and our season now there are only two turns per year in total war rome remastered summer and winter um as far as I know, I don't believe that those have a drastic effect on much. Um, I don't know if it has an effect on farming or income. So I don't know if you're going to see wild fluctuations further north you go. I honestly cannot tell you. But this just lets you know at a brief glance what your turn is and then what season. Uh, right here, we have the big campaign map. Now what we can do is I can click anywhere on here and it'll go right to it. So if I wanted to be like, okay, here we are. Let's see what Britannia is up to. And if we had an agent here, we could see everything that's going on. Um, or we can drag across inside of there to give a quick little look. It's a lot easier than using your, well, I haven't forgot to mention this, but your WASD to move around. So WAS and D moves your campaign map around. Probably should have talked about that a long time ago. And then you have Q and E to move it all the way around in rotation. Pretty cool. I like it. You can also hit shift, which will allow you to move faster. You can see I, I go a little bit faster when I hold down that shift button. But aside from that, WASD is going to move you around. But you can circumnavigate the world just a little bit faster by clicking in on that campaign map. Uh, the last little tidbit here is your map overlay. Now, this is something that we also looked at in the settings because... As you saw, it was a map, tac or tactical map, and then map overlay transition. So this is what I mean by that. If we were to scroll in or scroll out with our middle mouse button, if we scroll out really fast, you'll see that up top. Keep scrolling to toggle the map overlay. That is what that setting does, and it brings you into here. Now, if you were to scroll in, you could obviously get out of that. But there's two easier ways to do this, in my opinion. Uh, you can certainly keep on doing that, but you can also hit tab. Tab will bring you right into it. Or if you just really like clicking that weird I button, you can just hit the map overlay. All right. So the map overlay is going to contain a lot of information for you to customize as you see fit. And please, please do customize. Uh, I am familiar with this type of map overlay, so it doesn't overwhelm me to have everything turned on. But I know that it can overwhelm everyone else, especially if you are new. So we're going to turn all this off. And we're going to kind of go through it step by step. First off, you have uh, you have two sections. You have an actual settlement filter. And then you have what we call actual overlays. So the filters label things on the map for you. The overlays give you more broader things such as development or uh settlement overlay or satisfaction overlay excuse me so public order uh resources and even uh, security which is really really interesting but over here as you can see uh let's get into the main uh, faction overlay you can see our faction you can see all the other factions that have been uh revealed to you through the fog of war and these are all laid out over here so it's a super quick easy way to reference where people are on the map it's a very easy way to see your borders as well so we have that in terms of our first overlay but if you'll notice over here we do have our settlements as the filter the settlements have their own legends as you can see and if we zoom in we can see these a little bit better as well so we have a village town large minor large city and a huge city so if for instance we want to be like okay well i need to see where all of our towns are we can have the town over here of Sagesta or Sagesta. And then we have our Apollonia. By the way, both of these are owned by the rebels. And as you can see down here, they are considered an enemy. All rebels are considered enemies of the state, essentially. Um, but it just allows you to expand. There are several settlements within scattered throughout that are basically up for grabs. These are super easy to take. Your merchants are easily able to overcome enemy rebel merchants, etc., etc. 
is just kind of a good way to get a leg up quickly. So we can have all of these <clears throat> turned on. That way we can see everything that's going on in terms of settlements. Uh, we turn that off. Obviously, it turns all of those off. We're going to look here over with your armies. This gives you a whole bunch of stats on what's going on. This is your army strength. We have a uh, movement range left. We have armies in the settlements, armies in the field. There's all sorts of toggles that you can see at a glance from, again, everything that is within your fog of war that you've uncovered that you can visibly see. You can see things like this right here is not easily seen. You're going to have areas that uh, you can't see once you start expanding, but that that's uh, that's okay. Next up, we're going to see our agent overlay. And you can see here that we have our spy and we have a diplomat. These belong to us. They are our own and they are idle. And then you can see all, all the other uh, other agents on the field. So obviously our allies have their own diplomat. They will have their own spy whenever we see them. And then our neutral faction, the Gulls to the North, will have their own diplomat as well. It's just a really good way to see where everything is. Now, watchtowers are interesting. This is fortifications. Uh, if you were to build watchtowers in forts, which we'll get to eventually, uh, these would show up there on the campaign map. But then choke points is another interesting thing. These are usually river battles. I don't know if there are any choke points that are actual mountain passes. So that's something to consider though. And these will just give you ideas on where you could post up units to where an army couldn't pass through without having to pass through you. Super, super important. I really, uh, I'm glad that we have that. We have a retrain box, which basically just shows you any units that need retrained or replenished. We have the trade goods. We will get into the importance of trade goods um, in another video, but you can see here all of the trade goods that are sprinkled throughout the map. And there are quite a few of them. And these will be very, very useful for your uh, merchants in the future as well. So keep an eye on that. That's going to be a pretty useful one to use. And then we're over here into the overlays of diplomacy, of development, like I said, public order, resources, and even security. So the map overlay is pretty important. And at any given time, you can take a look at it and you can see how it can help you. I'm going to hit tab. That way we get right back out into the main uh, campaign map. And that is going to be it for the, your top right corner. Now, obviously, over here on the bottom right, we have the intern button. We're not going to worry about the intern button. That doesn't make any sense right now. We're not ready to end our turn, so we're not going to worry about it. Next up, you have your middle UI. And this is probably one of your most important pieces. This allows you, when you have nothing else selected, like the here, we have a settlement selected. If we don't have anything selected, this gives us our list of settlements or armies or agents or navies. So if we open this tab up, we can see we have Aredium and Arimium. They are both large towns. And then you have a whole bunch of symbols over here. We're going to get into that in just a second. But the same applies across the board here. Shows every single army we have. Rome Total War was one of the uh, few games that has your individual units moving along. So each individual unit, if it's by itself, would constitute its own army. They just may not have a character tied to them. So as you can see here, these are our four armies. Two of them are the faction leaders and the faction heirs. And then two of them are governors because they reside in our city. So the, uh, the character, I believe, with the highest governance automatically becomes your governor, which is really, really interesting. And that's what this stat is over here, your management skills. In here, you have your influence. And then of course you have your command. So as you can see here, Quintus Julius is not necessarily the best governor, but he would make a pretty decent commander. And your fa uh, flat faction leader, excuse me, would actually make a pretty decent governor himself if we chose to do so. This gives you your layout for your units, obviously. Next up, you have your agents, as you can say, Sectus Antio and then Decius Curtius. They each are their own units. One's a diplomat, the other is a spy. Now, this gives you your subterfuge and or your influence. The higher it is, the better chances you have of succeeding, as well as countering other agents from doing the same thing to you. 
Uh, I think it's super important to understand this whole bottom section because my goodness, it could really help you in a really quick pinch. But we're gonna head back over here to the settlements because I said I was going to explain this. Now we are missing a couple of icons and that's only because the game has just started and we haven't had time to build anything or start constructing new units. So as you can see here, our uh, our icons are incomplete and we'll be able to look at those once we get to it. But your leaves here are your government status or your governor status, excuse me, basically says, hey, there is a character who resides in this that is a noble or a notable character within your family, um, which gives boosts and bonuses in and of itself. This denotes your population increasing. There we go. Population growth per turn three. I'm going to get back out because we don't want to actually hover on that. This shows your happiness level. So we have happy all the way down to very, very upset. What's missing in here is your building status icon and your unit recruitment status icon. If we were to have both of those, you would see two more icons and it basically just states, hey, this settlement is already building something or hey, this settlement is already recruiting more troops. It's a really, really good method to quickly give a, a view over of what's going on. And then of course your turn income, which is very, very important. So of course the green denotes that we are making money, red denotes that we are not, and you can make negative money in a city. It's very hard but it is also very doable. So we've got governor, population growth, which is required to level up. We have happiness, which we can use to increase taxes. You would have a building slot, a unit slot, and then what that settlement is making. Pretty, pretty good uh, advice to keep this um, looked at regularly to see where you are with things. The last thing we're gonna look at and the last piece of this video today is going to be your faction summary tab. Now we can, uh, right there, you see that tooltip? We can right click to locate the faction capital. If you ever don't know where it is for whatever reason, it is going to be able to be found quickly right there. But if we click on your faction summary tab, it brings us to the faction summary. And this has a lot of juicy information in it as well. It gives the first tab is just your generic faction summary, your faction leader, his age, the stats that he has, your victory conditions and where you are at, as well as any current missions that you have. Then you boil it over to your faction stats, your capital city, family members, balance, regions controlled, battles won and lost, your ranking across all of the factions in the game, and then your diplomacy, who you are allies or enemies with, if you have trade partners, if you have trade embargoes, or if you have a faction or client faction or protectorates. Really, really good information you can quickly glance at over here just to give you an idea on what's going on. If we go over to the next tab, this shows the Senate, the policies, and the current standing that you have. So you can see here, while it doesn't change much right now, in the future, it's going to give us an idea on how we should approach these different units. So if the Senate isn't really jiving with the Greek city-states, you probably shouldn't have to worry about them and or you should be aggressive towards them because it will generate that happiness. Over here, you have your current standing. In Rome Total War and even in Medieval 2, you had a faction standing uh, with the Pope or the Senate. Now the Senate uh, and the people are the two parties that you're trying to please at the same time. And what typically happens is that you aren't or you aren't able to please both at the same time, at least not intentionally. So completing missions with the Senate will give you uh, an incentive to get a public office, which you can see is currently held by the SPQR, which is one of the few factions that we cannot go in and play without any mods or cheats being enacted, just FYI. But as you can see here, they hold most of the offices with the Skippy Eye uh, holding the very, very bottom. We want to start at the very bottom and work our way to the top. We certainly will as we continue our campaign. And then the people. Eventually, if your standing with the people gets too high, uh, the Senate will actually ask you to kill off your own heir or your own faction leader. And at that point, you should be strong enough where you can rebel, take over the Senate, and win the game in that manner. But right now, this just gives you your current standing between the Senate and the people. 
pretty general. This is your ranking and your diplomatic standing with all the factions that you know about. It's a pretty handy tool, uh, but it is also not necessary right at the beginning because you don't really know that much. You go over to the next and you have your list. This is the same thing as, as this, oh, I clicked off, as this right here, but a little more condensed. That's all this is. All right, so I wouldn't really use this one too terribly much. Now, the last two are really, really interesting. We have move followers and we have your agent hub. If you do the move followers, you can take any person or any uh, character within your game that has a character available to trade and you can trade it. So for instance, uh, we have the governor of Quintus Julius who currently has a drill master, which doesn't really help us too much, but we have a Freeman clerk which would give us some management as well as a 10% income. Uh, is it gonna tell us what that is? 10% income to what? Well, regardless, I think that our governor Quintus Julius should have it. So we're going to click on this guy who is currently under the possession of Lucius Julius, and we are going to move the merchant too. Now this one denotes how many turns it's going to take to move on over. Uh, if you are able to do this across empires, it will obviously take a few more turns, but it is an excellent way to get an older chap that's in your faction that may have a lot of followers and transfer them over because when he dies, all of those agents just kind of go into the free space. Something to consider, but we're gonna go ahead and hit confirm. And in that next turn, both of those guys will be in with Quintus Julius. Last but not least is your agent hub. Why I like the agent hub, is because it lets you click on any of your agents, what they've been doing, what they've been up to, their traits and their followers, and then it lets you go in and choose quite literally any type of action that you want. Now, eventually in the late game, this will get pretty tedious, I feel, but for instance, as a diplomat, we could have him negotiate with the Gauls to do something like a trade agreement, or we can go over here to Patavium and do the same thing or negotiate with a character to potentially buy them out. There's lots of things we can do with this and the agent hub and the move followers is going to be the two, probably the two most important out of this specific set of user interface. And guys, that's all we're gonna be able to do today. I just wanted to go over the main user interface so you can get a glimpse of what you need to do in order to succeed. I hope you enjoyed it. And in the next episode, we are actually going to look at the came campaign map just a little bit more your agents and your settlements hopefully that'll be a little bit longer for you guys but for now that is the end of this one if you enjoyed it be sure to give it a like and a comment and also subscribe to the channel be sure to check out my twitch which will be in the description as well where i stream primarily strategy content and i will certainly be streaming the uh, total war rome remastered when i can uh, which will probably be next week into Tuesday. Um, but yeah, outside of that, if you have yet to pre-order the game, you can totally do it on Nexus GG. That is my personal game store and a way that you can directly support this channel if you really, really enjoyed it. Uh, outside of that, guys, I appreciate you watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. This is Havoc, and I will see you all in the next video.